our dear learners, senior five history class in particular. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I believe where you are, you are observing the, the standard operation procedure of the Ministry of Health. The purpose of this interaction uh, from Dong Paul Apalokwang, History Department, and at the same time the History Expert, Trinity College in Abingo. The purpose of this interaction is to discuss a topic on European history, that is Metanix era in the period 1815-1848. Uh, this is a very interesting topic as you look at the personality, uh, one of the key players in the history of Europe. To guide you, we shall look at the background, look at metanic significance, in some cases they call him a coachman of Europe, shall justify. Then we shall look at why he was able to dominate the history of Europe then how we dominated the history of Europe by looking at the consolidation in both domestic and foreign policies. Then we shall also look at the factors for its downfall. In as much as we look at the factors for the rise, at the same time we look at the factors for the downfall of such a great important political figure. Then after which we shall go to analysis where I'm going to give you a sample question. Now, as a background, uh, Metternich was born in 1773 in Koblenz, that is in the austro prussian border, uh, born from aristocratic family and married the daughter, a granddaughter of one of the prominent Austrian chancellor. Metternich, in his early stage, witnessed the reign of terror in 1792. It was from there that Metternich hated anything to do with the revolution. And that is why when he was appointed as the Chancellor in 1821, Metternich described the revolution as chaos. And anything that brings about a revolution, such as desire for democracy, nationalism, to Metternich, he described them as administrative poisons. Uh, Metternich participated actively in the Vienna Congress and it is from such a background that we shall look at its significant contributions in the history of Europe and at the same time we shall criticize the, post, the, the, the significance in order to balance our judgment in as far as Metternich is concerned. Uh, briefly, Metternich was an opposite of Napoleon. While Napoleon I was a revolutionary, Metternich was a conservative despot. He surpassed Napoleon in despotism. And the period between 1815 to 1848 have been described as the Metternich era, given its dominance in the history of Europe. Therefore, between that period, Metternich played a significant role in the history of Europe. The first was the defeat of Napoleon, considering the chaos created by Napoleon in his expansionist policy and in an attempt to bring Europe under one ruler. Napoleon had destabilized the boundary, the peace in Europe. Metternich played a very big role in the defeat of Napoleon in organizing the fourth and the fifth coalitions. That made him very significant. After which, Metternich played a very big role in the Vienna Congress, which resulted into the Vienna Settlement. He was on record, together with the Castlery, for having compiled 121 articles that formed the Vienna Settlement. Uh, dear students, try to distinguish between the Vienna Congress and Vienna Settlement. The Congress was a meeting while the, set, the settlement was the outcome of this meeting. Uh, in such a situation, Metternich was able to promote a peace. 
he supported the restoration of legitimate rulers. The idea of restoration of legitimate rulers was initiated by Bishop Talleyrand of France, but the, the efforts and the support of Metternich Putin led to the restoration of the aristocrats. During the Congress of Exeter Chapel 1818, he was able to reconcile France and other European powers. He transformed Vienna into an important diplomatic center where European powers would meet to discuss uh, the international issues. In, as far as education was concerned, he was able to control ideologies by introducing decrees. He tried to bring all monarchs together. And that is at one time he said, monarchs must hang together, but not be hanged. Uh, to Metternich, all these were strategies to check on the spread of liberalism, nationalism, that had created anarchy in Europe. Uh, to Metternich, a revolution is a volcano which must be extinguished, an hydra with the jaws open to swallow the social order, a gangrene that must be burnt with the hot iron. Now, throughout his life, he exerted all his effort in trying to fight the spread of liberalism, and this was through control of the press, centralized the correspondence, convinced all European countries to accept Vienna to be the only uh, the center of European correspondence, media of communication, restored Catholicism, uh, checked on the spread of revolutions, expanded the, the Austrian boundary. Now, all of this proved that Metternich was significant. In as much as was very significant, positively, but Metternich also had some negative uh, consequences. For example, Metternich undermined some of the smaller states. There was despotism promoted in Europe. There was uh, uh, there was suppression of people's liberty, freedom, among others. Uh, even the restored legitimate rulers turned out to be great dictators. And it was because of such that Europe experienced the worst period of revolutions, 1830 and 1848, that even witnessed the downfall of Metternich himself. Now, from that point of view, after balancing the significance, positive and negative, it is important that we look at reasons why Metallic was able to dominate Europe during this period. And whenever we are discussing the history of Europe, it is important that you relate some of these facts with the current situation in Africa, why some leaders have managed to dominate their countries, why they have stayed long, why they have dominated this and this. This will help you to, 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 to link the history of Europe and the political situations in Africa to make the history of Europe relevant in your life. Now, Metternich's dominance of the history of Europe for 33 years can be summarized from three major areas. From his personality, then the weakness of the opponents, and the support that Metternich generated from different sectors. On his, as part of his personalities, look at his background. From being born from an uh, aristocratic family, this made him very significant and was able to attract support from different aristoc aristocrats. His determination and ambition, his education, Metternich was highly educated, uh, in as much as he studied diplomacy, he also read widely literature and different languages, such that Metternich was able to speak different languages. At one time, he added this to say, it is my habit to write to London in English, to French, to France in French, to St. Petersburg in Russia. 
And apart from that, Metternich had traveled in various parts of Europe, which enabled him to be acquainted with the political uh, barometer of Europe. His marriage was very significant in promoting. He married from a very significant family, which therefore made him politically important. And Metternich had come up with a policy of peace and no change what he described as quita non movera, peace and no chain. The fact that European countries were tired of wars, this made them to embrace metanic strategies of promoting peace and fighting anything to do with the chain. Metanic was on record as the number one enemy of the chain and the peace lovers supported him. Metanic had support from the Catholic Church from the aristocrats and from the Emperor Francis. Metternich was a chancellor, just like as you hear the Katikiro, the Kabaka. In this case, Emperor Francis was the, the emperor of Austria-Hungary. Now, he applauded the Metternich's strategies, and that is at one time he praised Metternich and said, govern and change nothing. So such support enabled Metternich to dominate Europe. Then Metternich enjoyed the weaknesses of the opponents, the liberals, the nationalists. That the nationalists were not united, they were militarily weak, economically backward, and it was because of that that Metternich was able to dominate Europe. Then also the nature of the Austrian Empire that consisted of 13 different races. It was very difficult for all this to unite against Metternich. Then look at the various policies Metternich adopted, the use of force decrees, all of this enabled him to dominate Europe. At the same time, he had a very strong army. Metternich had control over education. Uh, at one time, Francis had this to say, I need no scholar but good citizens, whosoever want to teach must teach according to my instruction. Whosoever want to introduce new ideas must go or I shall eliminate. This eventually proved that metallic dominance and control over education enabled him to control Europe. Now, after looking at how metallic was able to control Europe, then we shall be in position to identify some of the methods that Metternich employed which enable him to control Europe. So we look at how Metternich controlled Europe, looking at methods which he introduced and we can also call it consolidation. To consolidate that is to maintain power and maintain political zeal for that period of 33 years. So some of these methods can directly if you, fl if you flash at Africa, look at some of the leaders who have ever stayed in the power. What are some of the mechanisms that they have adopted in order to, to maintain or to consolidate themselves in the power? Uh, you will find that some of them are directly related to what we are discussing about Metternich, eh? about Napoleon, about some of any leader who stayed, who managed to stay in power, whichever period of time, whether for a short period of time, but always leaders come up with the policies, and some of these policies are quite similar. For example, Metternich used a spy network. There was a lady in one of the Italian states of Lombardy. She was quoted to have said, my daughter cannot snitch, but the Prince Metternich will know of it. This was to prove that Metternich had a strong spy network. In history, we call it espionage everywhere that kept him informed about the opponents and the strategies to overcome them. Use the press censorship, his education policy, and Bakagura. Metternich was highly educated, and he adopted the education system, which enabled him to dominate Europe. For example, some of the liberal subjects were banned, and he encouraged uh, only subjects, uh, like some subjects, in order to reduce on the, the opposition, there was no publication, that is press censorship, pamphlets were all brought under the government control. Metternich used the system of alliance, 
for example, the Quintuple Alliance, the Quadruple Alliance. He used the Vienna Settlement, in which he was behind the 121 Articles, use of the Congress system. Adopted also reconciliation policy. For example, they re reconciled with the uh, he reconciled France with other European powers. That was during the Congress of Aix La Chapelle. Metternich adopted the use of divide and rule policy, in which he posted foreign leaders, foreign rulers to different uh, different countries. This the fact that they were new in those areas of jurisdiction, it enabled them to work according to metanic system. So they became the rubber stamp of metanic. Now metanic is used to force the military means to suppress the opposition, the control of the correspondence. He tried to bring all the monarchs together. For example, Tsar Alexander I, in 1818, after the assassination attempt on his life and after the assassination of Kotzebu, the Russian professor, he confessed before Metternich when he said, you have correctly judged the situation. I regret the time lost. Tell me what you want of me and I will do it. This proved that all the monarchs were able to support Metternich. Metternich used the Catholic Church. He used to decrease. For example, the 1819 Carlsbad Decree, which he introduced to suppress liberal movements in the universities, especially in the Austria and the German universities. He tried to control the university ideologies by, by expelling all those liberal-minded uh, lecturers, students who were expelled because of liberal tendencies were not to be admitted in other universities. In this case, Metternich was able to control ideologies. He used a policy of peace and no change which led to his support. Now, from whatever we have talked about, how Metternich consolidated himself in Europe between 1815-1848, we can come to the last area where we shall talk about the factors for his downfall. In as much as we look at the factors for the rise of a leader, it is also imperative that we look at the factors which led to his downfall. As the last, the last phase in a Metternich's Era. Now, one of the major factors for the downfall of Metternich was the strength and the emergency of the liberals. Many liberals or liberal minded people rose up uh, in different states, the like of Bismarck, the like of Mazzini, the like of Garibaldi, uh, the like of Carvo. Now, these were people who tried to bring out new ideas which, which uh, poised on or downplay the Metanic's conservative tendencies. The rise of new leaders, at the same time the death of Metanic's contemporaries. It is a record that Metanic outlived his, his contemporaries. Most of his contemporaries are died. For example, Castle died in 1822 when he ran mad and chop off his neck. 1825, Sir Alexander I died. Even Emperor Francis died. Now, after the death of these contemporaries, the new leaders, the young people who came up, did not even know why Metternich was suppressing liberalism and nationalism. Look at his age, his age and fatigue, because he have uh, worked himself. By 1848, he was unable to judge, and at one time, in regret, Metternich had this to say: "I." I, I condemned the time lost. I would have come early or late, but coming late, I would have reconstructed the history. But all of these were regrets. Uh, the shift of a diplomatic center from Vienna to London clearly, do, clearly showed that Metternich was no longer significant. From 1830, most of the diplomatic meetings were now held in London. For example, the 1830 London Conference, which ended the Belgian Revolution, eh? the death of Emperor Francis, the collapse of the Congress system, left Metternich as a political orphan. The rise of a liberal pope, Pius IX, 
uh, who supported the liberal movements. This made Metternich to regret when he said, uh, we were ready for everything but the liberal pop. Now that we have one, there's no need for the other. So this was a clear testimony that Metternich was no longer significant from 1846. The occurrence of various revolutions, 1830-1848, uh, and the spread of revolutionary ideas played a very big role in the downfall of Metternich. Then the despotic character of Metternich, an emergency of a strong middle class. For example, in a, one of the German states, Prussia, there was the emergency of a Zollverein or the Custom Union that supported the liberal movement financially. Yeah. Then the emergency of underground newspapers, like in one of the Italian states, Cavo introduced a newspaper in 1847 known as Il Risorgimento, which means the uh, resurrection. This was to resurrect uh, the, the ideas of liberty, freedom, and the desire for the unification of Italy and Germany. Now, with all that, you find that Metternich was unable to live beyond 1848. And finally, on the, on the, on the, on the 12th of March 1848, a revolution broke out in Vienna that witnessed the downfall of Metternich. He fled to England uh, with a forged passport, according to history. Uh, that is a summary of the history of Metternich, and from that point of view, I would like to give you just one question. That uh, to what extent, to what extent, was Metternich a coachman of Europe between 1815 and 1848? To what extent was Metternich a coachman of Europe between? Uh, between 18, between 1815 to 1848. Uh, dear students, candidates to be and campus, campuses to be, uh, for more of this information, please visit our link below the link of www.tricona to, to get more information as we reach you through the digital system. I continue praying for you and please trust in the God for your safety, the safety of our country and the safety of the whole world. I remain Odong Paul, a Palokwang history expert, the political philosopher, 21st century.